safe and sound at home again. Let the waters roar, Jack. Safe and sound at home again. Let the waters roar, Jack. Long we tossed on the rolling main. Now we're safe for sure, Jack. Don't forget your old shipmate. Ah, there, mateys. It's uh, Hello Baloo here and welcome to episode 3 of Pirate Chronicles Naval Action. Uh, now this is going to be the last episode before the big wipe comes. Um, now that's due in the next few days but uh, it's likely to be a little longer as there are reportedly still a few bugs on the test server. Um, the reason is there's a little, little, little point in showing you any uh, more of the mechanics or some more of the mechanics as the, uh, this next patch is, is likely to change quite a few things. Um, now I've learned a few things about what's going on on the test bed and it appears that the game is going into a kind of hard mode. Um, now with the economy that's going to be entirely player driven so there's going to be no more materials uh, other than those that players themselves provide. Um, so it's going to be much more difficult to uh, get hold of materials. Um, it's going to be much harder to gain craft in XP. Uh, there's going to be fewer ships that you can place in the ports and uh, there's going to be a total number of ships you're allowed to spread across all your outposts rather than allocated for an allocation for individual outposts. Um, captured ships are going to be virtually worthless, uh, so they're not a good uh, revenue stream. Uh, there's also going to be perks, PvP, PvE marks and other kinds of marks are going to be introduced. Um, so... The main topic of this episode is going to be on trading because this is going to be required. Gathering materials and getting some kind of revenue stream in um, is now going to be essential for every kind of play. It's not going to be simply uh, catching AI, capturing boats and selling them. Um, that's not going to be possible anymore. So you're going to have to get involved in some kind of uh, outposts, ports, buildings and get some kind of revenue stream coming in, get some kind of materials coming in. Um, otherwise it's going to be very, very difficult for you to build ships. Um, so for that reason, uh, this episode is going to be focused on that. There is a little bit of PvP stuff, very little. Um, I did promise to go into some manual sailing stuff, so I'm going to talk very briefly about that. Um, but there are other videos on YouTube that, that explain that. But um, the, the way I'm going to explain it is just a different way, which I, I find, find easier to understand. So I'll go through that later in the video as well. Um, okay, so let's get cracking. So we're here in Kingston Port Royal again. Um, you can see my gold's got up quite a bit there. Um, this is because um, I've sold a lot of stuff out of the warehouse there. You can see there's a lot less here. Um, I've still got plenty of coal and I've got lots of this iron ore which uh, we smuggled in from uh, Mortimer Town in the last episode. Um, or uh, Ocean Bite. Um, so that I can still use that to keep my crafting up. Um, now... I'll just show you the contracts quickly. I've placed some contracts here. Now you get the gold from the contracts by claiming it. Now you need to be in the right port and the port where the contract was set up in order to claim the gold. Um, so I'll just quickly claim that. Oh, frame parts and uh, these planks. And that uh, has taken us up to a million gold. So uh, we are millionaires, Rodney. Um, now uh, I'll just show you these uh, transactions here. There is the cutter. So I did build the cutter and uh, sold that for 50,000. It was probably ridiculously cheap and that went to HMS Tovey. So uh, I hope he enjoys that. Now in the previous episodes, we have learned that uh, gold and silver are gonna be a pretty important commodity. Now I've been looking down this area of the map here and here in there's really a few towns here, but here in Calabello, there is uh, that produces silver. And if we uh, just type silver in the search here, um, and we want the actual ore, which is this one. And um, if we sort, um, if we sort by the the sell price, uh, we can see there Cordobello comes um, comes in top, so it's the cheapest place, Calabello, sorry. And right next to it there, Concepcion, that's a Freeport. So there is a way to transfer things from free ports um, to other free ports uh, without having to ship them yourself. So this is what I'm going to look into. Now, this means a long, long journey uh, down to Concepcion, and uh, that's going to take quite a while. Um, I'm going to have to go uh, due south from Kingston Port Royal and then uh, sort of head sort of southwest. Um, 
Now we're going to take the Le Gros Ventra because we're going to need a trading ship and we might have a quite a bit of uh, silver we need to move around. Um, I've got the Ghost Marines on there just in case of uh, any trouble. Um, and okay, so let's uh, let's set sail. Hold on a minute, just uh, just make sure. I've, oh, that's only two more. I've got enough crew. I'm all repaired. Okay, so let's set sail and. Uh, I'll show you um, how to uh, do these long journeys. Now, what I'd like you to take note of here uh, are the times. Now, on the left there, you can see it's uh, 15, for well, 15.50 now, um, on the first day of sale. And uh, I don't know if you can see, but on my real-time clock there on my PC, you should be able to just about see that down on the bottom right. You can see that it's um, 3.54 p.m. on the 16th. So um, that quite fortuitously me and means that uh, United are playing Chelsea in uh, six minutes' time. Um, so this is a perfect time to be embarking on a long journey like this because you really do need to be finding something else to do because um, I think it could take well over an hour uh, in real time to uh, go down to uh, this south coast. Unfortunately, we do only have to do it once uh, because once we get to our destination, we can set up an outpost and then we can start uh, teleporting ourselves, although not the ships or the goods, we can teleport ourselves um, around from outpost to outpost and I believe we can uh, teleport goods or at least ship goods uh, from different outposts from free ports um, I'm not entirely sure how to do that yet this is what I'm uh, trying to find out um, so we'll head off south and I will have to do a little adjustment um, when we get past uh, I think it's Pedro K just get past those shallows and then we'll basically be going southwest, and I'm just going to leave the game. I'll be semi AFK. I'll actually have it on another, on another screen while I'm watching the football. And uh, we'll come back uh, hopefully when we're a lot closer to the coast. So here we are. Um, you can see um, you can see the real time there um, down in the bottom right. It's now 4:49. So that's 50 minutes. That's 50 minutes real time. It's taken us to get here. That's 77:55, So it's along this longitude here. Here. So about here. So we're getting close. Um, we need to go, we're heading here, so a little bit more southwest, but um, I wonder if I can actually see the coast yet. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll do the turn just to make sure we're heading southwest. Just a little adjustment there, and um, it shouldn't be too much longer before we're there. Okay, so I can see the lights of a port here, so we've um, hit uh, this coastline uh, right down in the south of the map. Um, I think that's going to be Calabello. Um, yep, there's the writing. So that's Calabello. Um, so this is the port that produces silver. Um, now it's a British port, so I will be able to build there. Um, Really, I wanted to go to Concepcion first, um, uh, because that's the free port, um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, we can just take a quick look. Um, no, we can't, because it's a shallow port, of course, so um, we won't be able to get in, as you can see here. Um, there's no way that you can um, enter the list port, because uh, we're in the Le Gros Venture, and that uh, is a deep old uh, vessel so we're gonna have to turn up here and go to Concepcion 
and uh, jump into a shallow hold ship. Um, but it really makes noise. We need to go to Concepcion anyway. We need to go to both ports. So um, let's head there and uh, we'll um, have a look at the Freeport. We are in Concepcion, I think it's uh, pronounced. Um, you can see there is silver on the market here. Um, going for 1400 sell price. 166 is the uh, buy price for it. Um, now you can see I don't have any outposts in this port, so I'm going to have to build one. Um, there seems to be room for five. That looks like the total number of outposts um, anyone's allowed or I'm allowed at the moment. So let's build an outpost here. That's going to cost me 10,000 gold. And OK, so you see the teleport icons have now appeared under all the other outposts. Um, and I've also got this warehouse now appeared. So anything I leave here in the warehouse um, would, would now be safe if I left port. Now, there are also uh, buildings. Now, I've used it. So it appears I can have five of these also. Now, I've already used up my five, so I'll have to destroy one. So that hemp plantation, hemp plantation in uh, Port Morant, I, I don't think I've ever used that. So that gives me another build option. Um, now, there are no buildings here, obviously, because this is the free port. So you can't build buildings in a free port. But I'm going to need that empty slot uh, when we get back to Calbello. Uh, because there I'm hoping to build a silver mine because I know that produces silver and I should be able to produce my own silver uh, as well as um, buying some on the market. And there you can see those teleport buttons. I can now teleport to um, any of these ports. So you can see I am going to have to be careful about where I put ports. Um, I'm going to need at least two of these free port outposts. Um, so that's two of them taken up, one for the capital, one for where I'm building. Um, and I may need one uh, if I have a mine or something like that in a port that uh, my nation owns. Um, so if there's a pirate nation that has silver or gold or possibly some other sort of uh, more, more of the rare items, I might want to be setting up a port there. Um, so, OK, we're going to... Um, oh, they've got some, some bell pools here, but uh, they're going to be too far away to be useful for so I need to get a basic cutter so we can uh, that's a shallow bottom boat which is free to new players free to anyone um, but I know that can get into uh, the Calbello uh, things I buy some repair well, okay they're free as well so uh, might as well buy all of those um, so I know the cutter can uh, access the Calbello uh, port um, so let's go back there and uh, see if we can get hold of some silver so here's the basic cutter. Um, it's been a while uh, since I've been in this. Uh, this is, I believe, the, the boat you get when you uh, first begin. Um, it's actually very manoeuvrable, actually. So it's, it's quite handy for doing these little runs. Um, we haven't got far to go. Just uh, back up here to uh, Calbello. Here I am back at Calabello. Um, now, I didn't record it unfortunately, but I have actually already built the silver mine. Now, I've come back a few hours later, that's real time hours, and I've accrued quite a bit of silver already. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the labour hours to get much of it out, but that really doesn't matter at this point. So I've got 14 silver there, which I've got from the mine. Um, so I'll put that in the hold. And uh, I also set up a uh, contract. So uh, if you go to shop, um, and there's my contract. So you can see the contract there for 200 gold. So I've got some silver um, from that contract as well, which is actually really good news. Um, because that means even if um, somewhere like this, like Colabello, uh, is not in my nation when I'm a pirate after the wipe, um, I can still be able, I'll still be able to, to uh, teleport to, to uh, Concepcion and then become a smuggler, sail up to Calabello, set up a buy order 
uh, contract and uh, collect silver that way and then gradually stockpile it in Concepcion and then I should be able to move it to whichever free port is closest to where I'm doing my shipbuilding. Um, so that's going to be very handy and I think that's going to be the tactic. Um, so now let's just go to back to Concepcion and let's see about how, how we move this silver um, across the map without actually having to do the journey. So here we are back at Concepcion. Um, I'm loading the silver and uh, a couple of other the bull shark and uh, manta ray um, that I've collected. And I'm trying to move that over, I'm trying to find how to, um, and I assumed it was deliveries. Now I, you can see down there I'm in help and I've asked someone in help because it's it's not letting me send it to an outpost. Now what I'm thinking is that um, this is because I don't have an outpost in another Freeport and so you can only deliver from Freeport to Freeport and there we go that confirms it. So that's why nothing's coming up in this outpost uh, box but I'm assuming that uh, if I set up an, uh, an outpost in another Freeport then I'll be able to transfer the goods from Freeport to Freeport. So now I can simply teleport back to uh, any of my other outposts um, but of course then I would leave my ship, in this case a La Grosse Venture, uh, in the port that I'd left. Or I can use my go out into the open world and use my teleport to capital button, which uh, you can use once every three hours, and then I'll take the ship with me. Now I'm just going to show you this map. Now this is the map on the PvE server. Um, so you can see um, this is probably how the map is going to look after the big wipe. Um, now you can see the pirate area that I'm interested in. There's the Freeport Atwood, Ocean Bite, Little Inigua, which I'm thinking of maybe, basically, it's actually quite a way up there to Atwood, but probably sort of 15 minutes real time, maybe less. Um, it's quite a straightforward sail. Um, so that is probably where I'm going to be shipping my goods to. Now I've also noticed there's this pirate area here. Now that was taken over by the Spanish, I believe. But you can see Cocodrillo here, which I know produces redwood. Uh, that's also a, quite a valuable commodity, I believe. And there's Barcos there, which is a free port. So I could sail it round there to Barcos. Now it might be worth doing that beginning of the game, but obviously there's a danger that those ports are going to get taken. But I could ship it from Atwood to Ocean Bite, then sell some in Mortimer Town and perhaps stockpile some uh, there. Now there's notice also there are some more pirate islands here. Um, so and if with a free town there at the end of that chain of islands, so that's another possibility. But of course there's also a good chance that that's also going to be taken by a hostile nation uh, early on. Um, we just don't know. But it's worth mentioning at this point that there are rumours that um, some of the teleporting um, abilities are going to be taken out of the game. Now, if that's the case, uh, the rate at which ports are taken by enemy nations, I think, is going to slow down considerably. So these uh, pirate uh, ports that we have here may last a lot longer, in which case uh, the value of using them even temporarily um, as places to stockpile resources um, becomes more viable. And uh, the rumours even go as so far to say that uh, teleports might be taken out of the game completely, uh, in which case uh, that would fundamentally change things. Um, now, you can see there are those ports there. There are lots of pirates ports around there, and a free port, um, but they most of them would appear to be shallow ports but i know that uh, sandy point there is uh, uh, produces silver um so th again an another possibility but um there are these rookie capitals i'm not really sure where they are i don't know whether they'll exist on the pvp server um, i did hear something about there being a pve area so this may be it um, i'm really not sure how that would work um but that looks like a sort of dangerous and complicated uh, area from which to be shipping goods around. Uh, lots of British ports there. And uh, I really don't know. It could be a high traffic area. So, And um, you're going to be, have to be use a shallow hole uh, vessel. So 
that might not be so suitable. Yeah, so Sandy Port produces silver. Um, possibly ship it to that free port there, but <clears throat> that's going to be a complicated journey. It's a little far. And if we move down south here, now this is the area we looked at before, Concepcion and Calabello. Um, they're silver. Now there's also Buena Vista and Dariena, which is a free port. Now that's gold. Uh, Buena Vista produces gold and has a free port. So that would be very similar. So we would ship that up to Atwood. Um, this little area here I've shown you, moving all this stuff to Atwood, you know, possibly things around here. Um, but from Sandy Port, actually, maybe I could sail that down to uh, Atwood. So that might be worth thinking about, uh, docking there as, as a smuggler and buying silver and just shipping it to Atwood. So there's another option. Um, so basically that's going to be the plan. Um, but I think realistically it's going to be a little bit too early to really finalise this until I know what these changes and these teleport changes are going to be um, after the big wipe. And the other consideration is going to be trade routes because we're going to be needing to do some trading with trade goods, which I'll show you uh, in this episode. Um, so we're likely to want to uh, incorporate um, our materials with the trade routes, uh, I would imagine. So there's a lot to think about there, but you can see it's important to start formulating a plan about where your revenue is going to come from and how you're going to get materials in. Now I'm just going to show you briefly uh, trading missions. So you click on missions uh, in a port and you have combat orders, delivery orders, war effort supplies. Uh, I'm not sure what these war effort supplies do, but here's delivery orders. Um, now you see you have a number of delivery orders in each port. You can see they're pretty lucrative there. That's uh, over half a million gold for completing that one. Um, and in this case, it's uh, Jutland Amber. So you would simply go to the map, you would uh, use the trade tool, type in Jetland Amber, find the ports that have that available, um, and you would uh, accept this order, take this order, go and get the Jetland Amber, deliver it to the destination port, and there you simply um, complete the order and you're paid the gold. Um, any surplus you have over, you can just sell to another player, or you can stockpile and use for other ones. Now these combat orders here, uh, they're coming out of the game, so... Uh, this was a really good way to uh, uh, get XP and uh, some money, but uh, uh, I believe that these will no longer be in the uh, game after the wipe. Now, I did uh, promise to uh, show you a little bit of manual sailing. Um, now, I do have to make the point here that this isn't true manual sailing, which I'm showing you here. It's a bit of a shortcut, bit of a cheat. Um, it's a much simpler way to do it. Um, it's not It's not going to be as good as, as true manual sailing, but it's definitely going to get you to turning a lot, lot quicker. Um, and it's actually relatively easy to do. Um, so I'll just show you this. But to reiterate again, this isn't true manual sailing. This is just another way of doing it. So in order to uh, explain this to you, we need to understand a few terms. Now you can see in this diagram here, the uh, wind is blowing from bottom to top at exactly 12 o'clock and the ship there is facing downwind so the wind is directly behind it that's referred to as downwind now the next term we have to understand is beam reach now beam reach simply refers to exactly 90 degrees to the direction in which the wind is blowing so either side so 90 degrees uh, either side of the direction of the wind that's referred to as beam reach now, if you are sailing anywhere downwind of beam reach, so in this area here, that's referred to as close reach. So anywhere downwind of beam reach is referred to as close reach. And then finally, we have broad reach. So broad reach is the opposite of close reach. That's when you're sailing anywhere upwind from beam reach. So anywhere in this area here that is more upwind than beam reach, that's referred to as broad reach. So in naval action, you are able to turn independently your four sails 
and or masts and the aft masts, which I believe they're referred to, or just the front and the back masts. So the front masts, and very often a pair of back masts, they spin on their axis on the mast independently. And then you have keys on your keyboard that allow you to do this. Now, for most of you, I think the front or the fore sails or the fore mast is turned by the Q and E key, so Q to go left, E to go right. And the aft masts or the rear ones, they're turned using the Z and the C keys, so Z for left, C for right. Now, the other important thing to remember is if you double tap any of these keys, then it would automatically turn the mast uh, uh, as fast as it can all the way to as far as it can go. So, for example, if you were to double tap the Q key on your keyboard, then your fore mast is immediately going to turn to the left and it's going to turn as left as it can possibly go. And this is the technique I've been using. So whenever I turn, I'm double tapping these keys so that I turn my fore masts and my aft masts as far as they can go. So I'm only using the double tap keys. And once you've understood that, then the only thing you now need to remember is that when you're turning in close reach, you want your fore mast, your front mast, to be turned exactly the same way as your rudder. So in this example, you can see the rudder is set to full left. So if you want to turn left, you want your mast, your fore mast, to be turned left, and you want your rear mast, your aft masts, to be turned the opposite way to your rudder. So in this case, you want your, red, your aft mast to be turned full right. So in this picture here, this would create a fast left turn because the rudder is full left, the, uh, the fore sails are full left, and the aft sails are full right. So, and because you're in close reach, your ship is going to turn fastest to the left. If you want to turn right, then you want to put your rudder to full right. Your fore mask would be go the same way as your rudder, so that would be going right, and your aft masts, your rear masts, would be going the opposite way to your rudder. So they would be turned full left, and that would let you do the fastest right turn. Now, when you are sailing in broad reach, that is, you're sailing more upwind than beam reach, more upwind than 90 degrees to the wind, which is usually, or, or always, the, the slower, then the opposite is true. So then if you want to do a left turn, you want your rudder left as usual, but this time your foremast, your front mast, will be going the opposite way to your rudder. So if you want to turn left in broad reach, you'd have full rudder left, your foresail would go as far to the right as you can, and this time your rear mast, your aft mast, they would be going the same way as your rudder. So it's exactly the opposite as it is when you're sailing in close reach. So the only tricky bit is when you're turning and you're turning through beam reach. So in this example, imagine I've got full rudder left. I'm turning left. My foremast is going the same way as my rudder because I'm in close reach. My aft sails my rear sails are going the opposite way to my rudder because I'm in close reach and I start turning to the left. Now I keep turning and turning and then I start approaching beam reach. And this is the tricky bit. As you go through beam reach, usually just before, as you start to move through beam reach from close reach into broad reach, then you need to flip things around. So your rudder stays left, but then as you move through, double tap the uh, E key so that your forestail then starts turning all the way to the right and you, you would double tap the Z key so that your rear sails were going all the way to the left the same as the rudder so that as you move into broad reach 
your sails are now the other way and this gives you the fastest turn and then if you chose to for some bizarre reason do a 360 degree turn you then go all the way through broad reach through sailing exactly uh, upwind all the way back and then you start to reach beam reach again on the other side and then as you were going through beam reach you then do the same so your rudder would still be left because you're turning left but then as you move through beam reach you're moving from broad reach into close reach then you would then turn your foresail to the same way as your rudder and your aft masts rear masts would go the opposite way to the rubber rudder as you moved into close reach so let's look at this in practice here you can see i'm sailing in close reach and i want to turn right so my rudder's gone right i turn in right my foresail is the same way as my rudder and my rear sails were the other way and then as i go into broad reach i then flip them around the other way so now i'm turning right but my foresail is now going the opposite way to my rudder and my rear sails are going the same way as my rudder and then i'm turning through completely downwind excuse my poor gunnery there and here i've gone still turning I've slowed up a lot here because all I'm doing is turn. I've got no real thrust. But you can see I'm coming back through. I'm approaching close reach again. So going through beam reach. And now I go and double tap the keys. And my sails go the other way because I've entered uh, close reach. And now my foresail is going the same way as the rudder. And I keep continue turning through close reach. And then... I simply hit the F key, I believe the default key, that puts me back into auto and that immediately put the, puts the sails back into the position for the maximum thrust, the maximum, maximum forward momentum. So here we go, so I'm in auto and then I flip to manual because I want to turn again, I want to turn right. So I'm in close reach and so my four sails going the same way as my rudder, my rear sails are going, or our sails are going the opposite way to my rudder. I'm turning, turning, and then I want to go in this direction, so I hit F, back into auto, and that's put myself back into the place of maximum thrust and forward momentum. And that's it, that's really all you need to do, and you're, you're going to have your ship turning pretty well. Now, I'll say once again, that isn't true manual sailing, if you can adjust the sails um, you, can, you can sail properly manually and you can adjust the sails uh, much more uh, with much more precision than that um, turning all the time and, but, but this is a, is a much easier cheat and it's going to get your ship turning pretty quickly um, so that's what I would advise newer players to do and then by all means when you start getting good then you can by all means start doing real true manual sailing and then you're going to be turning even faster but at the moment just double tapping those masts following those rules that the four mast goes the same way as the rudder when you're in close reach the opposite way to the rudder when you're in broad reach um, then you're going to be turning really quickly uh, in no time at all now the only thing i would add to that is um, you need to be flipping to auto every now and again to give yourself that forward thrust. If you continue turning, your ship's going to slow up like mine did there with that long turn. So you're going to be wanting to flip out your back into auto to get that forward momentum to keep your ship speed up. And the only other thing I would say is you never want to be in auto when you're sailing uh, uh, upwind when you're going through upwind you really really always want to be turning if you flip to auto when you're going upwind you're not going to get any forward momentum and your ship is going to come to a complete stop which is uh, referred to as in chains so when you're sailing upwind then you always need to be turning not in auto trying to sail forward because you won't and your ship will come to a complete stop So that's my little uh, manual sailing cheat. Now I'm um, I'm not sure that 
that that is the best way to do it but all i know is is that's the way i find it a lot simpler it allows me to concentrate on my gunnery and other things and uh it's easy to remember and it seems to be working pretty well for me um and apologies again if i'm using the wrong terms like fore and aft masts i'm not sure if that's the correct terminology i know i did say that i would be more careful of that in future um but uh i think you get the general idea so uh that's that now I'd just like to talk about uh, one last thing in this video um, and that is is that I've fallen out of love with the Bell Pool. Now I always really love this ship because um, it's uh, it turns okay, it's uh, pretty quick, it's got decent cannons on it and it's got this sort of, um, I don't know if it's unique but sort of unusual sort of curve shape around its sides um, which mean, means that a lot of the cannonballs bounce off so it's actually got a lot more armour um, on, on its size than you would think um, but it has one huge disadvantage and that is that it doesn't have bow chasers that is it doesn't have cannons on the front so that you can shoot uh, ships that you're pursuing now I realize that this would be uh, you know some kind of disadvantage but because of the game mechanics um, I've discovered that actually this is a huge disadvantage now uh, I'll explain uh, how I found this out now I, I was uh, sailing um, uh, along uh, the north coast of Jamaica and I came across this uh, Wappen von Hamburg and I noticed that the uh, captain of this ship was uh, at too low a rank so he couldn't command enough crew and so he wasn't sailing this ship uh, particularly effectively so um, I saw an opportunity for a bit of a PvP gank and uh, chased him down now admittedly I didn't actually do this very well I mean um, for a start I'm a little bit too far away here um, now I could have got round it uh, perhaps and I, I, I just sailed badly in all honesty but nevertheless what I did discover is because of the game mechanics the huge disadvantage there is in uh, not having bow chasers So, um, I start uh, heading towards this uh, Wappen von Hamburg, a uh, straight atom, which uh, tends to be my uh, tactic. Um, now, you'll, what, what's happening is, is that the game mechanic at the moment is that there's a timer. There's a timer at which point, when this runs out, uh, the player has the option to leave the battle and then has the option to exit to a friendly port. So if he's able to leave the battle, he can exit to a friendly port and uh, he can then escape. Now, that timer is at least partly, I'm not sure exactly how this works, but at least partly dependent upon getting a successful hit. So what's, what the problem that you have when you don't have bow chasers is that when you're chasing down a ship, you need to make sure that you get an occasional hit on him. Otherwise, the time is going to go down and the ship can leave. So this then forces you to turn. Now, because the, the, the ship is sailing away from me, sending up wind, um, I've, I've got a problem because when I do my turn, I want, to, I want to fire this chain into him. And so I'm losing ground on him. Now, I fire the chain and I get a hit. So... That's fine, so I want to slow him down by, by hitting his sails. I don't do very well here, and I hardly hit him at all, so this is just bad sailing. Um, the other problem i got, of course, is, is because the wind is blowing through, tipping my boat forward, so it's very difficult to be getting the elevation I need to get the chain into him. And the only way to alleviate that would be to go to battle sails, which again would then slow me down even further. So I fire off this chain, then I've got to turn again to start chasing him down again. So really what I want to be doing at this point is, is not firing chain at him but catching him up because I know the bell pulls faster. So what I really want to be doing is, is sailing directly towards him and closing this gap. But I can't do that because I haven't got the, the uh, bow chase. It's just to put a couple of chain in. I'm forced to turn. And so here I'm forced to turn trying to get a hit on his sails. Event 
eventually get one there. So I've got another hit. So that's fine. So we'll just fire off the rest of them. I don't really care if these hit or not. And it's very difficult because I can't get the elevation. And then I'm turning again. But of course then I've lost even more ground. Now I forwarded the battle here because this just goes on and on and on. And you can see it's getting further and further away. And in the end I just get fed up with it. And I just decide, well, let's, I know the bell pulls faster. I'm just going to sail directly towards him and, and just and, and cut some of this distance down and get a lot closer. Um, and I'm just kind of hoping that, that, that he won't be able to escape. And it, this should be straightforward. I'm in a faster ship. I should be able to catch him easy. But you can see, because I haven't hit him for a while, I assume, uh, the timer then goes and he just simply escapes. Now, I leave the battle and... Obviously, I, I exit to the open world just to see if, you know, catch again. But obviously, he's going to exit to a friendly port in order to escape me. So, so you know, I come back into the open world and, and of course, he's gone. So, you know, th this, this really seems to be a slight problem in the game mechanics here because it, I really don't understand why anyone is going to be sailing the bell pool because having no bow chasers... Uh, with this game mechanic is just such a massive disadvantage so i'm going to be changing to the frigate or the pirate frigate simply because uh, they have the bow chasers so i'm going to end the video here it's actually a little bit shorter than the other ones um now i almost feel the need to apologize a little bit for this particular episode because it hasn't really turned out the way I wanted. Now, some of the things, I mean, I hope it's been useful. Some of the manual sailing stuff, some of the trading stuff uh, I'm explaining for newer players, I, I hope that's useful. Um, but the problem I have is that things are changing so fast with this wipe and with the new patches that I, I'm worried that some of the things that I'm explaining, even in this episode, might not be relevant after the wipe. So that there really seems little point in, in doing any more because even things like uh, the uh, the transferring goods from Freeport to Freeport that I explained, that may no longer be the case in this new patch. I, I'm, I've heard that, that that may be going also. So there's really little point in explaining anything more about the mechanics until we know um, what's going to be happening in, in the wipe. Um, so really, I just can't wait for the wipe to happen really because... I wanted this series to be uh, a bit more of a story, a sort of have a narrative thread going through it where you see me, um, you know, build up my resources, build the outposts, you know, start to develop relationships with other captains and other clans and groups in the area and watch all that develop like a bit of a story and uh, and, and that would be a bit more fun and, and that's what I want to do. And I can't really do that um, until, until the wipes happened. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, I, I, that. That's what I'm going to try and do in future episodes after the wipe. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it too. Uh, but for now, there's nothing more I can do. And I'll see you again uh, after the great wipe. Thanks for watching. Ahar, mates.